I saw on the internet there are two people who are um, trying to comparing the Python and C++ and they said they found some special some situations which are uh, Python actually that Python faster than C++ but as I see they are totally wrong and they don't care this they, didn't, they are not questioning these things these people are as I see developers software developers academicians they are they are academic people I mean how, how can we how can they say like this it is it is really weird so comparing the Python and C++ it is nonsense there is no logical thing to compare them. Python is a dynamic language. C++ is a compiled language. It is compiled, right? You compile your code to create the binary. I understand because, you know, I understand them. They said C++, you know, everyone is saying that C++ is efficient. So why this, and this question is not answered, right? Why C++ is not used in the AI? And in the AI area, in AI field, Python is really popular. So I think this is the thing, this is the reason for this comparisons. I don't know, I don't understand. So in this tutorial, in this video, I will show you some real example. What they are trying to show us, or what is the, what is the correct re the thing, correct, what's the correct uh, result here. We will understand better. So why we shouldn't, why we shouldn't compare Python and C++, we will understand. But in the beginning, I have to say, C++ is faster than Python, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't use the Python. Python is better to create simple applications, test applications, and some kind of demo applications also. If you want to create something fast, yeah, Python is nice, right? It is easy to understand, but maybe also if you want someone to, uh, you know, learn coding, the understanding things, then Python maybe yeah better. It is, it is uh, easy. It has an easy syntax than C++. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. There is no problem there. Also in the AI, as I see, I don't know why, but on all scientific area, that maybe we can discuss in this in the other uh, video, in all scientific area, Python is used for the AI and machine learning. And there is no problem. Okay, it's not it's not problem for me, right? Okay, but when you want to build something stable, something memory efficient, memory efficient is really important, something fast, then of course you will use C++, right? You cannot do this with the Python. This is, this is really crazy. And I saw people in the, also in my professional life. These people are developers and architects, technical leads. They said, yeah, let's use Python. Let's not use... <laughs> C++ for what? For electrical cars, Lots like, like a Tesla, right? I don't know, it's really weird, for example, for me. And also Tesla tweeted these things in, I don't know, a few years ago, I think. They said, we will not use Python anymore for the AI applications. We will switch to C++ for efficiency. Yeah, he is right. <laughs> he is absolutely right. But I really don't understand why in the beginning they didn't choose the uh, C++ actually. Weird, weird, weird. I don't understand, really. Okay, let's start. Let me explain a few things. So first, let's talk about how Python works. When you uh, run the Python in the background, there is an, a Python virtual machine and there's an interpreter actually. You don't have to create any binary, any executable, right? This is the, this is the point of the uh, dynamic language. Python is a dynamic language, as I told you. So simply when you uh, provide some syntax, some code to the Python, first the uh, syntax will be checked and then it will translate it to the uh, hardware language. The, all the languages, you know, all the software languages, this thing's quite, uh, you know, common, it should be common. You should translate your code to the machine language. In the Python, it is done dynamically. Dynamically means you don't have to create exec table. So there is a layer between your code and the hardware. This layer, this uh, interpreter, let's say, translate your syntax, your syntax, your script to the hardware language. So you can simply run your code like this. In C++ or C, kind of languages like this, uh, like the languages which are close to hardware, 
that you need compiler. Compiler means you write some code, compiler take this code and convert it to the binary directly. I mean, you don't wait, you don't do this dynamically. First, you compile your code, you create your executable here, then you run this executable, not this file anymore, not this uh, syntax anymore, not this file anymore, not this code anymore, because you compile it according to the hardware. So it's not generic, right? This is the, also the advantage of the Python. Python is a dynamic language, so you can run your uh, Python code where Python virtual machine is exist. It doesn't matter that if, if the hardware is different, then you should use different compiler in the C++, for example. This is the disadvantage. That is why there is a uh, cross-compilation process. That is why there is a cross-compilation process, actually. So how PyPy works? PyPy simply use different approach. There is a still interpreter, but this is kind of uh, GIT, which is called a GIT, just in time compilation. This is a different approach simply, but it is faster. It is faster than the Python, normal Python interpreter. That is it. But you cannot use this uh, GIT compilation, just in time compilation with every project because this will not support everything in the Python. That is why you can ask yourself, right? Okay, if it is, this PyPy is faster, why everyone is not using this, right? So because it does not support every libraries, every, I don't know, every uh, everything in the Python. That is why it's not uh, used, you know, for every project. But you understand the idea, right? They, uh, the PyPy used just-in-time compilation so that means it is quite faster for some cases, not for all cases that we will see in a minute. So let's write some uh, example code to, to compare uh, Python and C++. We will write some uh, simple for loop, which will uh, add the uh, number you know, in the for loop. So we will write also the same approach and the same thing in the C++ and we will run these two different uh, languages with the languages, the same code, then we will see a difference. Okay, let's play. Also, we will run this application in Python and PyPy and C++. Import time. Also, we will measure the time when we increase the uh, number, right? When we add number in the for loop. You will understand better in a minute. Time, time. Let's create a number variable is equal to zero. Mm, range. We will increase this number up to the one million, for example. One thousand, one million. Then we add number to the i. Then we print, we have the start time right now, and we will have we will have the end time, then we will print here the difference. The elapsed time, let's say. So just simply uh, print for the milliseconds, right? I just multiply by 1000. It will directly give the, uh, you know, the time. Then I want just want to print only the millisecond here. That is why I just simply uh, multiply with the 1000. So first we read here the time and we read again and minus start, which is here. Then we will have the elapsed time for this for loop. We will do this in the same fast plus also the same approach to uh, see the difference. Okay. Let's write the same thing for the C plus plus. Include. I couldn't see the keyboard. Sorry.
same amount, 1 million and we add the ink EI to the number, right? So we need this again for end, then I just want to uh, measure the elapsed time. This is the same in the Python what we added, what we did here. Thing. I should hit a double, I'm not sure that we will check it. And I want millisecond. I can write here and minus begin. Then we will need count method for it. And it will be better to put here maybe millisecond. Okay, that is the same code for C++. It will simply uh, count, you know, in the loop, in the for loop, it will incre increment, it will increase the i incrementer here to the one a million be careful also integer here more than 1 million it depends on your operating system right be careful about it so it will add to the number same here so we will measure the time the passing time for simple for loop with the python pypy and a c++ okay let's go to the terminal so simply we have counter pi file you know and the counter cpp file okay let's first run the python counter pi of course we will use a python tree okay i write an error here yeah i just forget it printf is not defined This should be print. Yeah, it's I made this every time, the mistakes. It take around 246 milliseconds to increment, actually to increase to the 1 million, right? It's correct, 1,000, 1 million, okay. So it takes took 246 milliseconds. Okay, we can run again. It's around the same amount of time. See, 200 between 230 and 270 or something like. Okay, no problem. Let's put there. So let's let's. But you see that here, we don't uh, need any executable. I just run this Python script, right? This is the dynamic language, right? That, is, that means this is dynamic. I didn't co compile anything. So let's just check the C++ site, how, how it should be done. Okay, you need a compiler. In this case, I'm using this G++ compiler. Then you first pass uh, then uh, the name of the file and let's create the exec table, minus O output means it, which will create executable counter let's say the name you can give whatever you want yeah there is no syntax problem so now see that we have a executable so we compile the code and the code this binary has the binary I mean the binary machine code right now 
So there is no um, interpreter here, right? We just run directly this exec table. That is why right now we will see, we should, uh, you have to do like this to run, dot and slash. That is why we will see faster um, time, faster process. Let's check. See, 2.5 milliseconds. Okay, let's, let me put here the end line. Let's try again to make it, you know, this part and the uh, uh, not uh, below. Okay, so yeah, this one. See, three milliseconds. Let's run again. Four milliseconds. Two milliseconds. It is really faster than Python. See, two hundred thirty-nine milliseconds it took. Same for loop. But in this in the C++ same for loop took around three milliseconds. Nice, this is really fast. Now let's try with the PyPy. This Python script, PyPy three. Let me clear the screen. PyPy three. Let's put there. And counter pi. See, it took. Around same with C++, it is, it is actually it's faster than C++. Let's run again. Yeah, it's faster right now. See? It's 2.7, 2.6, 2.3, sometimes 28. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it's, it's not good. 2.4, 2.4, 2.4. See? 2.8. So what does it mean right now? Python is faster than C++? No, 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 no. This comparison is wrong. It's totally wrong. I saw on the, some blog on the internet, I think he deleted it, or <laughs> I don't know why. When you look something like this, you have to really be careful, okay? Okay, we use right now here a different a translator for the Python, but we didn't optimize anything in the C++, right? You cannot compare with with C++, with kind of these things, with the another uh, dynamic languages, because it's wrong. Okay, let me let me show you why. Okay, let's let's go back to the uh, compiler. So I will optimize the code right now here. Okay, you will understand what I mean. Let's, <laughs> then you will be you will, you will understand better. I mean, okay, to optimize it, you should pass big O, and there are. I will put three here, but don't worry. This is just an optimization. I'm not going to in details, maybe later. Minus O3, then it will optimize the code. That means it will execute it faster in somehow. I don't know how it will be optimized. It is the compiler's job, right? So I, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't care right now. So let's optimize it. So let's run again. Oh my God, what is it? Eight. Point three. This, mean, this means close in zero milliseconds, guys. <laughs> this is fast. See? This means uh, 8.4 power to 5 something, okay? After, I mean, after the zero. Zero point zero 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 eight or something. This is fast. See? So what, what happened right now? We cannot compare, as I told you, we cannot compare like this with the Python and C++. C++ should be faster. C and C++, right? Must be faster, actually. You cannot beat it in this area. It's not possible. Okay, let, let me show you why why this uh, optimization work for this. But be careful also, optimization will not work for everything here. When you have, a, for example, we will test in the next this, some kind of uh, file operation, then you, see, you will see that optimization will not work there. Because you cannot, as I told you, you have to understand these things. Otherwise, comparisons will be wrong. So, there is an uh, gobble.org here. You can uh, simply convert your C++ or, uh, I don't know, yeah, there are some other languages. C++ code to machine language, okay? The assembly language, actually, here. According to the 
the compiler, but it doesn't matter right now, the compiler version or uh, the something that don't, we don't have to care about right now. The, the, the point you will get it, actually. This is why I'm just showing you. So I just put here simply main and, you know, it's just a for loop, nothing with the uh, chrono library to measure the time. So as you see that this is the equivalent of the uh, this code, okay, the left hand side equivalent, the right hand side is the uh, assembly level assembly language of the right hand side, left hand side, let's say, I don't know right, left, what about you, okay. <laughs> so this is the, when you convert this code to the uh, assembly language, it will be like this, according to, the, of course, the compiler. But right now, as you see that there are some push moves, so don't worry about these things. It means we, it will take some time, right? Every these, um, this commands, right? These things consumes the cycle, the compile this uh, CPU cycles, right? That that is why it took some time. That is the reason, simply. It is. It can be seen here easily. So let's let's check. Let's let's check what when I uh, put here minus big O three. I mean for the optimization. See, there is a compiler options a place here that we can put something during the compilation then we will see the difference in the um, assembly language minus o3 see <laughs> just three lines of assembly language that means it is fast now we compile because the number is already known right here we don't have to wait the uh, runtime here we can calculate in the compilation time. So it just directly write to the hardware, the, the value here. That is why we saw really fast uh, execution time. This cannot be done with the Python or dynamic languages, right? Because it's dynamic. It it's actually translate the syntax, translate the codes. It simply translates the code during runtime. That was the point, right? So that is why C++ must be faster than Python. Okay, to understand better, let's create another application, which will um, open and close a file for one million times, okay? With Python and C++. Let's check what we'll see. Okay, I just, I don't wanna waste the time, so I just simply write the code here. The only thing, the different, different thing here, I just put here then F open and F close, okay? So we will not increment anything, we will, add, we will not add anything to any value, Sim simply we will open a file here and we will close it. And we will do this for the 1000 time. The reason I'm doing this, the file operations need system calls. We are right now in the Linux. So system calls are uh, quite expensive. I mean, you have to ask something to the kernel side. So what does it mean expensive? You, you need more cycles, more CPU cycles, which means time, more time. So let's, we will understand now how Python will behave in such a situation and how C++ will behave in such a situation. Also with PyPy, of course. Okay, let's come back again. Python 3, file Py, okay. It will take some time because 1000 times opening and closing the file. It took 25 seconds, guy. It took 25 seconds. See, it's really much. Okay, let's let's try with the C++ side. This is again same. Let's check. This is one million. Yeah, it's one million. And it just creates this uh, txt file and it will close and open again, close again, open again like this for one million times. First, we need to uh, compile it, right? file cpp minus o file first also you will see the optimization i i'm okay let's let's try like this okay i got an error 
Let's just let me check what is the problem here. Okay, we can use this. Okay, I just copy the other uh, line from the other other uh, previous file. So let's run the file right now. Yeah, it took eight milliseconds, eight seconds, sorry, eight seconds. See, eight thousand milliseconds means eight seconds, right? It took eight seconds, but here it took 25 milliseconds, 25 seconds. See, it's fa it, is, it is really, uh, you know, C++ faster here. So why? Yeah, because it's C++, it's, it's compiling language, right? So let's try with the optimization right now. We will see difference. But I think there will be no difference, much difference. Because optimization is not related. I mean, the uh, system calls, you cannot do anything with optimization. Yeah, this is quite the same. You can run it again. There will be no change. Yeah, see. So that doesn't mean also optimization will work for every each case. You, you have to understand this. So let's run with the PyPy. But this was, really, I think, the nice one. PyPy3, PyPy. Let's run. One eternity later. So it took 51 seconds. It is so simply, I found a case that PyPy3 is not faster than Python. Even in Python, not on a C++. So what does it mean? In the beginning, we saw that PyPy can be faster than C++ without optimization for C++. But now, for this file operation, PyPy is slower than Python, not on C++. <laughs> so that is why I told you, these comparisons are wrong. You cannot compare like this. Okay, let's, we can try again. But we will get the same, quite the same number. So that doesn't mean if you see some case that it is faster than C++. No, no, it shouldn't be. You have to, you have to understand the problem there. There should be something. Okay. That is why I told you these things cannot be uh, compared. Compare this comparison is wrong. See again, quite same number, 53 seconds. So you should be careful about the cases right you should you should know what you are doing otherwise this will be not academical this will be not the comparison will not be the, you know scientific but i saw in the internet people are comparing these things like this they found some case which is according to them which is faster than c plus plus or c then they said oh python is faster let's use python everywhere oh yeah this is this is wrong this is wrong i didn't say don't use python right in the beginning, I told you, if you want to create some, uh, you know, small applications, test applications, AI applications, Python is, yeah, it's better right now. But if you want to build some stable application, some, you know, memory efficient application, then of course you will use a C++ there's, or kind of languages like a compiled languages. There's no way. So guys, as a result, as I told you in the beginning, if you want to create AI applications, or if you want to create some test applications, some demo applications, if you want to create, um, you know, quickly something, then you don't have a time maybe, then Python is nice. Yeah, it's okay. Python is better. But if you want, but if you want to build something stable, right, and you don't have to care about the time and money, then yes, C++ is the choice, one of the choice. That is it. 
there is no there is no meaning that we shouldn't use the Python or we shouldn't use C++. These are totally different languages. You cannot compare with single for loop or single file operation or single AI or whatever. It is not logical. It is it is not mathematical. It is not scientific. You cannot compare these things directly like this. Okay. For some cases, you will use C++. It is obvious. For for compiled languages, I mean, for some cases, you will use dynamic languages. That is all. That is all. Nothing more.